We're accustomed to believing that our happiness is dependent on circumstances, right? Nobody would question this idea. So for example, think about a time you've really felt joyful. Just uh, some, something that happened, if you can capture a moment in your head. The last time I really felt genuine what I would call joy. Uh, it might be something like, oh, I reconnected with a loved one. But capture that, whatever that is for you. And now I want you to question if that person or that event actually gave you joy. So for example, let's say, Maria, you see um, an old best friend from high school. And oh my gosh, you guys embrace so much joy, so much happiness. Um, I might walk by her, let's say on the street somewhere, and I don't know who she is, right? So she's just another person to me. So I don't get the same joy that you get, right? So if she herself contained the joy and infused you with it, uh, why didn't I also feel that when I saw her, when I met her at the grocery store checkout or whatever? And you can apply that to whatever your uh, circumstance was that you thought of that gave you joy. So now I would like you to investigate a little bit deeper into that experience. What joy really is, fundamentally speaking, is how bad we want this moment. So the more I want only what is happening now, and I'm not reaching for the future or the past or any circumstance at all, when I really, really just want to be here, the fragrance of that is joy. So the person that you reconnected with or uh, the roller coaster ride you were on, whatever it is, that was actually just a symbol to you individually that represented how bad you wanted only this moment. So joy isn't actually dependent on anything. If you can come to the place within yourself that is still and present and isn't, you know, arguing with reality, then you can connect with that joy regardless of what is happening. Another way you can do it is to realize the futility of believing that happiness exists in a future moment. Because it's really just a tricky thought that our mind grabs us with, right? Oh, if I can get to that place at that time with that person, then I'll truly be happy. But we find that even if we are happy in that moment, best case scenario, well, the moment's quickly over and we're back to being miserable again. So, what if you stopped wanting anything except for what is, how reality actually is? And now, of course, the mind will throw up the worst case scenario to get you to reject this idea. Well, if someone's trying to murder me, I'm supposed to feel joyful? How can I be joyful about that? Seems practical. But what living with joy means is that joy is your default. It doesn't mean that you're gonna look at human suffering and feel joyful about that. But it means that underneath what is being seen, there is still a foundation of peace, of inner peace and stillness that doesn't come and go with the circumstances. So everything is recognized for what it is. This is just a passing cloud, essentially. And ego wants you to go chasing clouds. But the, uh, you know, let's say the enlightened mind, the master, the sage, they are living in a place of, of what they would call inner stillness, inner silence, which is what we contact in meditation. 
You know, the ego says, how boring. I don't want it to be silent. <laughs> Nothing's going on there. It's just this peace. It's boring. But the master is outwardly doing things, paying their rent. They're speaking with this person. They're helping that person. Um, walking through the park. Whatever the outward play is, is still going on. Outwardly, you're still playing in the world of form, but inwardly, you are without identity. There's no person commentating on what's going on. Does that make sense? There's no interpretation of what's happening that could make it into something that causes suffering. Because it is the mind that creates all of our suffering. Yeah? Whatever your problem is to the mind, is in, in reality, it's just something that needs to be done. That's how, that's how the universe is actually seeing it. But the mind interprets it as, oh no, this is terrible, resist this moment, fight against it, attack it. So it's helpful to think about living life um, as sort of like learning how to surf. Surfing the wave of, of life. If a surfer is you know, in the ocean trying to catch a wave, sometimes a surfer might get out of position, right? That's a lot of what surfing is, is knowing how to predict where good waves are going to appear. And sometimes they're in a bad position and they see, oh, this wave's actually going to uh, hit me from where I'm at. So what does the surfer do? Moves with the water, right? Either they go into the wave and dive under the wave, right? But they don't just sit there and go, well, this wave is going to hit me, so there's nothing I can do. I have to accept that. Right? That's not what acceptance is. Living from acceptance or presence is an inner state of alignment with life. In the same way that the surfer is ali aligning itself with the ocean. So it doesn't do the surfer any good to see the wave coming that's going to hit them, which represents an unpleasant situation, circumstance. It doesn't do the surfer any good to fight against the wave, right? I wish you didn't exist! Slapping at the wave. <laughs> but that's what we do. And the reason a surfer doesn't do that is because when you're surfing, you understand, naturally, that every wave has the whole ocean behind it. How futile is it to resist this wave? It's happening whether I like it or not. So it's actually a form of unintelligence to resist what is. If something can be done, if I can surf this wave, I surf it. If it's gonna hit me, I go under the wave to minimize the blow, right? I'm moving with life. So when we reach that state, which is really our natural state, so it's almost a paradox to say reach it, you don't reach it, you recognize it. Uh, that is where joy is felt because you're always accepting what is. So even if something seemingly unpleasant happens, there is no inner resistance that rises up to say that this shouldn't be happening. And so it really isn't narrated as being unpleasant. It might be a difficult circumstance, a challenging circumstance, but even then, the intuition of life it comes, flows through you and, and shows you why something is happening, what lessons are here to be learned, what evolution is here to be had. You're so plugged in with life that you're not missing any details anymore. You know, because you are life, you are the universe, and so that concept of every wave has the whole ocean behind it means every circumstance that is happening has the whole universe behind it. Can you see that? What is happening right now, even this moment, is actually a sequence of events that you can trace all the way back to the Big Bang. And everything that had happened before this, the dinosaurs, you know, you name it, had to happen to create this moment, right? So if I resist this moment, I'm resisting everything that's ever existed. In the same way that a surfer who resists a wave is resisting the entire ocean. So in that sense, the ego makes us dumb. And Love, joy, peace, these things we consider them luxuries, they're actually just intelligence. They're actually just what we see when we're not misinterpreting life. So a question for you to consider then is, what if 
the reason we want happiness and joy and peace more than anything else. What if we want those things because fundamentally that is what we are? That is our natural state. And we're chasing, chasing, chasing because we hear the call from joy, from happiness, saying, come home, darling. Come home to the place you've never actually left. You're just in a dream somewhere out there, dreaming that you're this separate person. But what there actually is, is only oneness. Everything is interconnected. Every wave has the whole ocean behind it. You are a wave in the ocean. You are the present moment. You know, when you reconnect with your friend from high school and joy, oh, well, your friend is the moment, right? Can you separate them from the moment? And what is happening in this moment is reality. And so you felt joy because you were plugged into reality. What if that's how we're all meant to exist? That we can have joy be the default. You don't have to be in this state of anxious waiting for a circumstance to line up just right and then, oh, now I'm happy. And then when it misaligns, oh, I'm sad again. What if that's not the natural state? We never question it because it's the normal egoic state of consciousness. Everyone is living this way, being swayed to and fro by everything that happens, being swayed by every appearance. But what if you are meant to live with peace? Is that so difficult to accept? That that might be true? <laughs>